Now we are following superior from the heart. Here are the left and right common carotid artery. The common carotid artery will be branched into internal and external carotid. If we see here, there are very nice branches of the carotid artery. This is internal carotid artery. The next one, external carotid artery. The third one goes around the face. This is facial artery and the last branch from here goes underneath the tongue that's the lingual artery so here kind of there is a fan-like distribution with the four branches now we will follow the vein so that means in the reverse direction from the brain the blood is collected by the major branch the most prominent one this is external jugular vein left external jugular coming back to the heart the left external jugular and the right external jugular there is a connection in between this is called the transverse jugular vein which is present in the rabbit but not in the human and these jugulars will then merge with the superior vena cava in the respective sides In this section, we will start with the left subclavian artery and then we will follow along the thoracic area to the brachial part. And here there are the branches very intricate in different number of different directions. So if when we open up the thoracic cavity from the subclavian, there is the branch, this is called internal thoracic or mammary artery. In this region, running also parallelly with the artery is the internal thoracic or mammary vein. Coming back to the left subclavian, coming out through in this area under the arm, the very first branch, this is thyrocervical next branch is the thoracoacromial across from the thoracoacromial this is called lateral thoracic see this is the pectoralis muscle distributed in there then the subclavian while passing in this area it is called the axillary artery on the back, maybe you can see, if we stretch the arm, this is subscapular. And all of these are arteries what I have mentioned so far. Axillary will be continuous as a brachial artery. In this region, it is the same artery, but depending on the region it is passing through, the name changes, first subclavian, then axillary, and then brachial. For the brachial section, we can also trace the veins. This is the brachial vein, returning blood back to the heart. So from the brachial vein, gradually we will follow the subclavian, merging into the superior vena cava, and this is the left superior vena cava. We will now start following the inferior region from the heart, still in the thoracic cavity. You can distinctly see this is arch of aorta. The ar After the arch, the aorta starts going down posteriorly. So in this region, this is called descending aorta because now it will take blood to the inferior part of the body. 
this is descending aorta look how big is it specifically this is called the thoracic aorta now if we move all of these thoracic organs on one side towards the left we will see a very prominent vein this is called a zygous vein this is called a zygous or a zygous vein there are no two uh, branches of this one that is only one in the thoracic region that's a zygous vein 